Hey there, today I would like to review a fountain pen which I ordered online and which I received really just a couple of hours ago. I have been experimenting with it quite a bit and I like it a lot so I'd like to share my thoughts with you. Now this is a fountain pen from a brand that I'd never heard of before actually, it's called Jean-Pierre Lépin and this is a brand, as you may have guessed, based in France. This is the box the pen came in, this is the, um, let me see, this is the Jean-Pierre Lépin logo. I'm not entirely sure what the B stands for. Obviously JP, uh, now I pronounce it French, sorry, the, the JP is Jean-Pierre. Uh, I thought it was also his wife operating in his shop, but she is called Jacqueline. So I'm not sure what the B is. I know that he has two sons, I think, that uh, cooperate with him. So perhaps that's the B. I'm not sure. In any case, it says they're based in Paris. And it says, let's see, handmade in Jura with passion in France. Now, this is a pretty cool box. You may be able to see that it's kind of textured, um, which I thought was kind of cool. It looks a bit like, it, well, it feels a bit like, like textile of some kind. And it's nice. And it looks as if this will just slide out, but it doesn't. Actually, this is a magnetic seal, which is pretty strong and if you open it then the whole thing opens up like a sort of uh, constructivist piece of art or something inside the box there is a standard guarantee note which is actually kind of interesting because it says Nous ne pouvons pas assumer la responsabilité de dommages résultant d'une utilisation anormale ou détérioration Deteriora I can't pronounce it in French. Deterioration. Which means something like the English translation is recited. Yes, I do speak French, but not that well. However, we cannot accept responsibility for damages caused by misuse or deterioration. Deterioration? That sounds like the pen will rot away or something. Well, in any case, let's just take a look at the pen. Now, I should warn you, I have fairly large hands. But this pen, it's not that small. Yes, it's small, but it's not, uh, you know, my hand, well, I should put it differently. My hands aren't that large. Not that large that, you know, this is a normal sized pen. This is a traveling pen, like the Caveco Sport, which you may or may not be familiar with, but I think this is a fairly common pen. Uh, well, the Jean-Pierre Lépine is even smaller, but it's also made from different materials. If I understood correctly, it's made with, well, it's made from uh, an artificial resin, uh, which feels really nice. This really feels silky smooth, which is kind of cool. And I hope you are able to see that there is a type of marbling, sort of marbling effect going on in there which I think is really cool. Now these pens are made in a, a host of colors. They are made in a more a bright red with marbling and some other colors. This is called the um, uh, Indigo Purple Knight. And I, I thought it looked cool and I thought it would be nice to have another traveling pen. I kind of like, you know, as I said I have large hands, but uh, I like the, the concept of a, a small pen you can take anywhere you go. It's, it's just easy, you know, when you're traveling or, or whatever. Okay, so we've got the resin body, and we have these highlights, the metal highlights, they're actually chrome. Uh, and I think that looks pretty cool. It's not too bright, not too flashy, but it's nice. What you probably cannot see, I don't think my camera is going to pick that up, but on this ring, again it says Jean-Pierre Lépine, the name of the brand. And it also says Made in France 2000. Um, I take it that's the year, not a serial number of some kind. What I like is this clip. It's pretty, you know, 
artful. I, I like this sort of, it's it, well, playful, that's actually the word. It, it looks a bit, you know, frivolic with the, the, the shape. I, I like that. What I don't like so much is the fact that this is a very tight clip. It's, it's really almost impossible to move. And if you put that in a shirt pocket, like this, then I can actually imagine some damage occurring because it's it's really uh, a little tough to get out. In any case, you know I, I don't generally carry pens in my shirt pocket, so it's it's not an issue for me. A funky little thing is that the pen has a twisting a twist off cap, which I like a lot. Uh, if this is a traveling pen, you could put it in your you know. Uh, Trouser pocket, if you like, and you don't want your cap to fly off, right? So you really have to screw it on, which I like, and also you can screw it on the back to post it. Not pop it on, but really screw it on. And the funny thing is that no matter how you do it, the clip and the nib will be aligned pretty well, which is not really useful, but it looks cool. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, so, okay, let's go on. The the nib is of material I I, I don't know. I don't know what it's made from. Um, it's it's. Well, I would say stainless steel. Maybe they put some chrome on it. I'm not sure. In any case, it's it's pretty smooth, smoother than I expected. So that's that's cool. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's got some. I don't know whether you can see this very well. I don't think so. But in any case, it's got some nice lines on there. It looks it looks. They paid attention to that, which which I like. It looks nice. One thing that's a little strange, I don't know if you can really see this, but the the feed and the nib are not aligned perfectly. There appear to be a little bit of play in that, and the, the split between the times, well, let's say the feed is about, well, about there and not entirely in the middle. Not a big issue, it writes perfectly well, but you know, nitpicking. So you screw this off, you screw it on again, very nice. The barrel of the pen looks the same on both ends. I kind of like that, it's, it's, yeah, it just looks nicely balanced. And this pen is surprisingly heavy. I was surprised by that. It's such a small pen, but it, it's heavier than a noodless flex pen filled with ink. And considering, let me see, I got one here. Considering the uh, the size difference, yes, this is resin, and but then again, this is resin too, but it just has more chrome on there. But it, it, it really makes a difference. So this is a pretty heavy pen, which I like. I like it a bit of weight to a pen. Now that's cool. So what kind of ink does it take? Well, it takes pretty much any ink you like. The only thing is, it has to be in an international cartridge. There is no converter for this pen, so forget about using bottled ink. I think. Because, as you can probably see... Okay, as you can possibly see, there is a rubber O-ring right there. So, maybe... You can use it as an eyedropper converter pen. Fill up the barrel with ink and then just screw this on there again, clearly without the cartridge. Um, I don't know if that's the function of this rubber o ring. I would be surprised if it is because you can probably not see it, but inside here there's quite a bit of chrome and I think that'll be eaten away by the ink. It, I think it will just rust. But you know, um, I don't really feel like trying this out, but who knows, maybe it's possible. In any case, what the O-ring does accomplish is that it's, it really, uh, the, the last, you know, screwing on bit is a bit tight, so you can't accidentally open it, which is nice. It came with one standard international cartridge, black ink, which looks like this. Uh, at the end of the video, I will, um, upload a couple of still shots of my writing, some, some tests. Uh, let me say this about the writing. The nib is pretty flexible. I think I can show you that. Let me see. 
Yes, right here. Um, you see that? That's a, a pretty impressive amount of flex for a, a pen like this, I think. So you can actually do some, um, well, slightly flexible writing with that. Uh, I was surprised by that. It's a pretty smooth pen. It, it writes well. I did find the grip section to be ridiculously small. Actually, now I said I have large hands. I have, you know, but I mean, look at the width of this finger and look at the width of the grip section. You know, I mean, so if I hold it like this, without the cap, without posting it, I can't write with this. Uh, I have to post it. If I do, then it's okay. I mean, it, it really is a nice size then. You may see that. Um, that's good. Anything else about that? Yeah. Uh, this, this has some edges here that may be a little sharp if you hold it for a long time. I shouldn't hold it there, but I always hold my pens a little high. Something like this. It's just a personal quirk. It just happens automatically. Uh, I found it actually to be... The grip section is small. It is actually okay. I can use it comfortably. But for me it was even better when I held the pen over there. So then I'm really holding it, you know, actually holding it at this point. So actually holding the barrel instead of the the grip section and then it writes really smoothly and still there's enough pen on my hand to make sure it's comfortable to hold. So a very nice pen. It's uh, It cost me 65 euros. I actually don't have an idea of dollars at the moment. Um, 70, 72 dollars I would say. Something like that. So it's it's do the calculation if you like. 65 euros, uh, which is not extremely cheap, especially considering it's a pretty small pen. Then again, I think it's well made. It's well made. It's got some nice details. Um, it looks nice. The, the the marble effect is is pretty pronounced, but not too flashy. I think it's still classy and acceptable. So that's very nice. Uh, if you ever see one of these, or, or if you're looking for a traveling pen, uh, then I would I would seriously recommend getting one of these. Compared to the Kaweco Sport, uh, this is mine. This is one I converted to you know, eyedropper filled pen. Uh, this has a gold plated nib. In my experience, this was a little bit smoother to write with. But then again, I've only had this one for hours. Maybe I just should just, you know, get used to this pen a little bit more. I like it. Now, I also got something else in the same shipment, uh, and it's I don't have enough to say about that to warrant a full review, but I would like to share it with you. Uh, there is an interesting Italian brand called Marchiaro, Yes, I think I said that correctly. Marchiaro, and they make leather goods and accessories. And I needed a new pen pouch to store my pens. My old one was getting too small. So I got this, which looks big, right? I'll go back a little bit. Yes, it is big. It's got a nice zipper. And in there, it holds no less than 40 pens. See that? There's this sort of flap that will protect the two layers. There's one there and one there. You know, one over here. You can close this up. One band would have been nice if there were two bands of you know elastic, but actually these are pretty tight. Your pens don't really move, so that's kind of cool. Uh, happy with this. It was expensive, but it it will hold 40 pens. Now imagine getting you know, uh, 20 pen pouches that hold two pens, that will be expensive too. And it is real, like, Italian leather, and it, it, it actually feels good. It's pretty thick, by the way. So that's nice. So, uh, if you want more information on that, then you can just drop me a message and I can give you some more details on that. I just wanted to show you that I have this really cool pen pouch. Now, one thing I would like to point out, uh, is that I, I got this pen and the pouch from a Dutch 
web store that sells writing instruments, accessories, it even sells watches and, and leather goods like briefcases. And I have always I, I've ordered it a number of times from that shop and I've always been very pleased with the service. And in this case, because I ordered something from that shop while it was actually closed for holiday, I got some extra stuff for free. Now that's always nice. I got two of these things. You're wondering perhaps what this is. Well, you may recognize the basic design that looks like Jean Harbin ink. It is Jean Harbin ink. These are little tins, cans, uh, that hold six international cartridges like this. Now actually I always use bottled ink but as I just told you I now have this fancy little pen and it only takes international cartridges. So how cool is that? I got that simply because I was willing to wait for my order. So I now have six Poussière de Lune and six Violette Pensée international cartridges by Jean which I really like because these are two of my favorite colors from Jean And also I got a Moleskine notebook clear so no lines just clear paper which I also dig because that's pretty cool I, I moleskin I just call it moleskin it's a little simpler you know, easier to pronounce um, I got it for free how cool is that so I mean I'm not affiliated with the shop in any way I would just like to point out that I have always been very pleased with it uh, and if you are you know Considering buying a pen, I think especially if you are in Europe and especially if you're close to the Netherlands, like Germany, France, Belgium, uh, something like that, I would consider the shop La Couronne du Comte, which means the, um, uh, the, the crown of the count. I will post a link in the description below. Again, I'm not affiliated with these people. I would just like to point out that it is a good shop, good experience with it. In this day and age, we are all very eager to complain and vent our frustrations. But the flip side to that coin is that you should also, you know, <laughs> make clear that when people do something well, you know, they should be praised for that. So, just so you know, a nice shop. Finally, I will upload some stills of the writing and some high resolution shots of the pen right now so you can just check it out at your leisure and that's it see you later Yeah.